Well, hey everyone, quick video for you. Well, I have a few of these MR16 LED 12 volt bulbs. I really like them, I use them in various places. But I've noticed something they interfere with my radio reception. There's a station I like to listen to. It's a low-power, non-profit type station. They play oldies. And they put on various shows, different times of the week. And they have an ERP of around 100 watts. And they're a few miles away. So the reception can be dodgy. These radios have a pretty good receiver. And uh, I can get it pretty good. However, I noticed sometimes... I had a difficult time of receiving the station. Well, I eventually found out it was these LED bulbs. They don't completely block the station. They kind of add a static to the background. Now, I'll demonstrate, but I have to use a religious station because, you know, I can't play the copyrighted music. But I'll have to use that as an example, unfortunately. That station also used to be an oldie station, 106.5, and uh, they, I guess they sold out their rights or whatever, and uh, now it's a religious station. So yeah, that's one less good station to listen to, because, you know, I'm not going to sit and listen to Jeebus talk all day. But anyhow, we'll turn it on here, and I'll put on the light, I'll connect the light up to the battery and listen to the background. Okay, I had to tune it in here, move the antenna wire around, my makeshift antenna to replace the broken antenna on this thing. But anyhow, turn up the volume. If you were to meet Alan and, <laughs> and Brandon and Mark, you would not want to be on the bad guys team, I'm just telling you. <laughs> God has put together an amazing group, and when we come back, we're going to find more. What's behind the lantern on Lantern Rescue? Lantern Rescue is a USA-based organization that conducts... So as you see, when I hook this up, I get pretty much static. Now you might be saying, well, it's only a few inches or centimeters from the radio. But where I'm set up, the radio is actually several feet, but I still get the static. So I'm kind of curious of what frequency is coming out of this thing. What, what kind of signal is being radiated from this? So what they might be doing is using a spread spectrum type driver. What they do is jitter the signal a little bit. So that spreads the noise across the band evenly. But when they do that, it's a very low level. Instead of a fixed frequency where you'd have spikes at different locations, higher amplitude spikes. So uh, that's why they do the spread spectrum type with uh, I think some class D audio chips do that and maybe some uh, power supply type drivers I've I've heard it done I'm not sure if they're using it though but this seems to affect any weak station it doesn't bother stronger stations but it interferes with the weaker stations Okay, I removed its little socket and connected the alligator clips right at the terminals. That way I can probe with a scope right there because I can't really get it into this thing. The little uh, metal tabs are in the way. Okay, probing across the terminals. And if I disconnect the power, you can see, yeah, there is some noise. I'm probably not getting a good reading. 1.3 something megahertz. 14, yeah, 415 kilohertz. Uh, bandwidth limit doesn't really do anything. Now I know the LED bulb does have a filter on it. It has a coil and capacitor. 
to help keep the noise out of the line, but you know, it's not going to be 100% effective. Okay, so we're looking at the spectrum analyzer mode here. Have it set up to look across the whole spectrum from 0 to 200 megahertz. And I have the cursor in the middle here at 100. So I'm just going to unplug the scope probe lead and connect this piece of wire into the connector on the scope. I'm going to act as an antenna. Now there's better ways to do all this. I'm just literally just grabbing a piece of wire I found on the bench. And I'm going to turn the 50 ohm impedance mode on. That just cleans up the lower end. There's not electrical noise. So that just cleans it up. Yeah, it looks like there is some garbage here around. It's probably getting some FM stations, I bet. Around uh, 100 megahertz. But anyhow, let me connect this LED light up. Oh, look up here. Pretty broad band noise you can see as I uh, turn the light on and off. You can probably see a little bit of reflection of it. So uh, if I move the cursor over here around 147 megahertz is where the worst of it is. We can see it peak up somewhat across the whole spectrum. So yeah, the sensitive tuner of a radio is going to pick that up. Now I'm kind of curious. I have an FM transmitter so I can transmit the audio from my computer into other parts of the house. I'm going to turn that on and see if this will pick that up. Oh yeah, it got it. It's at 105.3. We won't be able to tune into that all the way because, you know, I, the adjustment would be kind of coarse looking at the whole frequency range like that. I'd have to zoom in on it, but yeah, 104.8, probably as close as I'm going to get this, 105.2 around that area. Yeah, pick that up. Okay, let's see what we can do about this. Well, I dug through my junk box and found this common mode choke, probably out of an old projection TV I drug home one time. And it's probably way overkill for this, but yeah, it's the only thing I had. So let me turn on the radio again here. And right now this is bypassed. It's not in the circuit, so we'll hear the noise again. I'm excited. <laughs> I really am. This is the overdriven religious channel. The overdrive so bad it's distorted. It like technology. And I need your call now. What was the match? Your news of the week from a biblical perspective on Prophecy Today with Jimmy D. Young Jr. and Rick D. Young. We are... Okay, well they were playing music and yakking too much. It's hard to hear and maybe a copyright issue. So what I did is turn on my FM transmitter, moved it to another room so the signal's kind of weak, and uh, connect the light up. The coil is bypassed right now. So you can hear there is some noise involved. So let me move these jumpers here. Okay, so now the coil is in the circuit. Let's see what happens now. Much reduced. I mean, you can hear it a little bit. I mean, this radio is pretty close. But hugely reduced. Now, I could do more. I could add capacitors across these leads and, you know, that would filter it even more. But you can see how putting the common mode choke in circuit there really helped with our issue. 
Well, this video is getting long, so I'll wrap it up here. Hopefully it was interesting. I have a lot coming up here. I want to get started on the Son of Easy Amp. I have some more JAT501 stuff. Hopefully I can get the Gerber files and everything uploaded. I got some of the uh, documentation updated for that as well. So uh, stand by for that. And thanks for watching. Okay, I removed the socket and connected the outer... Ah, bah, 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 bah.